Hi kids! It's great to be with you again for our second Grant Kids Bible lesson. I'm Mrs. Lisa. And I'm Topher. Topher, you're not wearing your star sunglasses today. Nope. I'm already an internet star, but now I'm thinking about my next career. Your, your next career? Yeah, my brothers and sisters have all decided that since I'm an internet star, all 12 of them are going to be internet stars too. 12? <laughs> so I've decided to do something different. Really? Okay, so what have you decided? Just a sec, I'll show you. Oh. Hey, that's pretty neat. Looks like you're getting ready for a rodeo. That's right. I've decided to go from internet star to cowboy. Yeehaw! Oh, yeehaw! Wow. Trevor, that's quite a change. So have you looked into what kinds of things you're going to need to do to be ready to be a cowboy? Of course. Since we've been at home a lot lately, mm -hmm. I've been learning about horses, watching videos about cowboys. Okay, that's a good start. And I'm also practicing getting up real early in the morning. <laughs> Excellent. And for my birthday, I've asked for a herd of cattle. I I'm sorry, what? <laughs> a herd of cattle. A herd of cattle, that's what I thought you said. Well, whether you end up getting a herd of cattle or not for your birthday, it certainly sounds like you're getting ready. You know, Tova, that reminds me of our key verse for today. Is it about cowboys? Not about cowboys, but it's written to cowboys and to police officers and ballerinas and parents and kids and nurses, anybody, even Sunday school teachers. It's a verse that tells every Christian about what something they should be ready for. Cool. Can you help me find the next verse and mark it in my Bible now? Sure. Let's do that right now. And you kids too, if you've got your Bibles and a Bible highlighter, now would be a great time to mark off our key verse and our Bible story for today. Be right back! Eddie has marked off their verses. Can we sing the Bible song? Oh, sure. Actually, before we do that, though, I have a challenge for you and for the kids watching. Are you ready? Okay. Okay, and this challenge, I'm going to show you a picture, and you're going to tell me what it is, okay? All right. So, can you kids tell me what this is? Give you a hint. It comes from a grocery store. It's a pepper! Okay, how about this one? You probably have lots of these in your house. Can you guess what it is? It's actually a ballpoint pen. Here, one more. Can you tell what this is? This is something you shouldn't do by yourself. Ah, it's actually a matchstick with a flame on it. Huh. So, how did you do? Was it hard to find out what these things were? Why was that? Topher, what do you think? Why was it so hard? Because the pictures are zoomed in too close. You can't see the whole thing. Exactly. <laughs> it reminds me of when me and my brothers and sisters do FaceTime with Grandma and Grandpa. We like to go in super close to the camera and, and get them to guess who it is. But all our noses look the same, so they always get it wrong. <laughs> Guess what? It's the same thing with the Bible. If we just look too closely at any one verse, we might actually get wrong what it's actually saying. And we don't want to be wrong when we're reading God's Word, do we? No way. Can you show us? You bet I'll show you. Let's sing our Bible prayer song and then open up God's Word together. Yay! The Bible is special, the Bible is true, it's God's word for me and you. Holy Spirit, help us know you are all that we need and you love us so. Okay, let's start with our key verse, 1 Peter 3.15. The part we're going to try to remember is right in the middle of that verse, right at the top of the page, if you have a Bible that looks like this one. At the top of the page it says, Always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks about the hope you have. Topher, what do you think that means? That's easy. It means any time an adult asks me, what do you hope to be when you grow up? I will have an answer for them. I will say, I hope to be a cowboy. Yeehaw! <laughs> that seems to make sense when we just read the one sentence close up, doesn't it? But just like with those pictures that were too close up to tell what they were, we need to see the whole picture that the Bible verse comes from. So how do you think we can see the whole picture of this verse? Read from further back. So Mrs. Lisa, if I... If I go further back, I fall off the table. Oh, well, you don't have to fall off the table. It's not about reading from further back. It actually means that we're going to read just a little bit before and just a little bit after the verse we're talking about. So in this case, if we were to go back to verse 8, for example, we don't have time to read the whole thing, but I can tell you that in verse 8, it tells you, uh, sorry, in verse 9, don't pay back evil with evil, don't pay back unkind words, and it talks about how God sees everything that's done to us and by us, 
And it says that we shouldn't be surprised if we suffer for doing what's right, and that if we do, we would be blessed. Then we have our verse that says, make sure that in your hearts you honor Christ as Lord. Always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks you about the hope you have. And then after that, it talks about how if you get punished for doing something wrong, don't worry about it. That God is with you and he will do what is right. That doesn't sound at all like what do you hope to be when you grow up. Oh, you're right, Topher. It's not actually about what kind of jobs you would eventually do anyway. It's about being fearless and doing good even when mean people are being unfair to you because you know something that changes everything. What do you know? That because of your faith in Jesus, you are God's own child. And this promise is for all Christians, whether they're cowboys or veterinarians or hockey players. Hmm. Mrs. Lisa, is there a Bible story that would show us what this looks like? Hmm. You bet. The Bible is full of true stories to help us see how the things God says come true in real life. So we can flip over to Acts 16.16. 16. I hope you've marked that one off there. Okay, so the person who's telling this story is named Luke. And he's talking about when he and his friend Paul and Silas were visiting a new city. They were there to tell people about Jesus. So let's start here. One day we were going to the place of prayer. On the way, we were met by a female slave. She had a spirit that helped her tell people what was going to happen. She earned a lot of money for her owners by doing this. She had owners? Like how people own dogs or cats? That's right. It's against the law in Canada to own slaves, but back then it was quite common. And this meant that she had to do whatever her owners told her. But you know what was even worse than having that? Something worse than being owned by people? Mm -hmm. She was owned on the inside by the spirit that was living inside her. They would make her say things that would happen in the future. She wasn't even in control of what came out of her mouth. Really? Mm -hmm. And her owners liked it this way because people would pay them to hear the things that, she would, that the spirit would say through her. That poor lady. I agree. So let's see what happened next. She followed Paul and the rest of us around. She shouted, These men serve the Most High God! They are telling you how to be saved! She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became upset. Turning around, he spoke to the spirit that was in her. In the name of Jesus Christ, he said, I command you to come out of her! At that very moment, the spirit left the woman. Mrs. Lisa, why did Paul get upset? Wasn't the lady saying the truth? Well, that's a good question, Topher. I've often wondered that myself. It could be that she was shouting so loud all the time that people couldn't hear what Paul and Silas were trying to teach. Or maybe she was kind of distracting and people were too distracted by her to listen to what they were saying. Or maybe Paul just felt really sorry for her because as long as that spirit was living inside her, she couldn't even become a Christian herself. She was being a slave on the inside. Oh, I guess that makes sense. I'm very glad that the spirit left her. God is stronger mm -hmm. than any spirit, isn't he? He sure so is. So then what happened? Okay, so after that, her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, so they grabbed Paul and Silas. They dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them to the judges. These men are Jews, her owners said. They are making trouble in our city. They are suggesting practices that are against Roman law. These are practices we can't accept or take part in. But that wasn't true. They weren't causing trouble. No, they weren't causing any trouble. Then the crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas. The judges ordered that Paul and Silas be stripped and beaten with rods. They were whipped without mercy. Then they were thrown in prison. The jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put Paul and Silas deep inside the prison. He fastened their feet so they couldn't get away. Mrs. Lisa, they didn't deserve to be thrown in jail, did they? No, they certainly didn't. Or beaten and whipped. That's horrible. Mm-hmm. Oh, I would be so mad at those mean people. I would ask God to make them be in jail and set me free. But what if you remembered the big picture of that key verse that we read before? That if we're punished for doing good, we shouldn't be afraid, but remember that no matter what, we belong to God and are his child forever. What? But I'm so mad and sad. Those mean people did all this to Paul and Silas. Okay. Well, how about we keep reading? At about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying. They were also singing hymns to God. The other prisoners were listening to them. Wait, wait, wait. They were singing? Mm-hmm. 
Yep, Paul and Silas have grown so much in the power of the Holy Spirit that even when they're beaten and thrown in jail, it really doesn't matter to them because they know that they have forever life with, with Jesus and God is with them at all times and they have real hope. Hope, that was in our key verse. <gasps> Always be ready to give an answer for the hope you have. That's right, Topher. So who do you think might be wondering about the hope that Paul and Silas have right now? These two men singing when they should be crying or yelling. The other prisoners, the jailer, even the people who were hurting them before? Yeah, I think you're right. Whoa. What are you thinking about, Topher? Well, I'm wondering. I'm just thinking about the times when I'm upset because somebody has been mean to me. Not very good at making myself be happy. I don't understand how Paul and Silas could do it. Oh, but Paul, they didn't make themselves be happy. They were already happy even before they started. They were? Mm-hmm. They went to that city already knowing that some, th some, at some point, someone would get angry and eventually they would have to suffer something, although they didn't know what it was. They did? Mm-hmm. They did. Do you know why they expected it? Why? Because it happened the last time, and the time before that, and the time before that. As a matter of fact, we saw this happen to Paul twice in our lesson last week. We did? Mm -hmm. I don't remember hearing about Oat Paul before. Last week, the man's name was Saul. That's right. And actually, Saul is the same guy as Paul. He just has a different name when he's traveling around the Roman world. But he's the same guy. Oh, okay. I remember last week in the Bible, it said he became more and more powerful. Not with big arm muscles, but with God's power. That's right. So last week, God's Spirit gave him the power to be able to tell people that Jesus was God's Son. What do you have? He has power to do two more things in this story. What are those two things? Do miracles, like send that spirit out of the slave lady. Exactly. Doing miracles. And what's the second thing? Hmm, I don't know. To suffer with hope. Being beaten and thrown into jail? No problem. Compared with what's waiting for them in heaven? It's really not a big deal. It's a very bad day, but it's not really a big deal. Because the absolute most important thing in the whole world has already happened to them. What's that? God forgave all of their sins when they believed in Jesus. So now they are God's children for good. In this life and then forever. And God has given them this job to tell others the good news so that they can be saved too. And God gives Paul the power to not be afraid when bad things might happen? Mm-hmm. And to see wonderful miracles happen. Along the way, Paul is having such an adventure. Whoa, I think even cowboys don't have those kinds of adventures. <laughs> they will if they're Christian cowboys who are following what God has for them. God has adventures ready for all his children. Some parts will be really difficult, and some parts will be super fun. But all of them are good because we have real hope. Mrs. Lisa, I still hope to get a herd of cattle for my birthday, <laughs> and I still want to get ready to be a cowboy when I grow up. Mm -hmm. But I think what's even more important is to keep reading this book so that I'm ready for whatever adventure God has for me next. Topher, you are a very wise gopher. And you know what? You're going to have a chance to start reading your Bible right after this video. Because I bet you'd like to know what happens next to Paul and Silas. You mean you're not going to tell us right now? I'm afraid not. We're out of time. But God does some amazing things you won't want to miss in the rest of the story. But before you go, kids, let's pray together to our amazing God. God in heaven, you do such amazing things. Thank you for the Bible so we can know what you are like and learn to love you more than anything in this world. Would you grant saving faith to all the kids who watch this video that they can start living the adventure of faith? A life is your very own child because of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for watching, kids. Bye. See you next See week. See you next week.